This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good morning to everyone. I'm so happy that so many of you got up on this Saturday morning to join us for our Saturday church school. And I see that people are still dialing in and signing in, and we're grateful to God for that. So um, what I wanna do is open up in prayer on this morning. Um, so let us just do that. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we come to you, dear God, to say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for our last night's rest and touching us, O oh God, with your finger of love that we may rise to be able to give your name all the praise, all the honor that you are due on this morning. Right now, oh God, we come to study your word. Open up our minds, oh God. Open up our hearts, oh God, that we may be able to hear and understand what it is that you are saying to us in your word. Right now, oh God, we ask that not only once we get an understanding of your word, that we will be to 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 clearly go out and tell your story, oh God, to tell people what it is that you have for them to do in order to be saved. Right now, oh God, we ask these blessings in the precious name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so I'm excited this morning about um, today's lesson. As you know, we have been the last couple of months talking about love. And um, for the month of October, we've been talking about inclusive love. And today, we're going to be focusing on love for neighbors. Um, our devotional comes from John 5, 1 to 15, and our background scripture from Leviticus 19, 18, and verse, also verse 34. And our main printed text for this morning is from Luke, the 10th chapter, 25th verse to the 37th verse. Um, and I hope that some of you read the lesson um, prior um, to this morning because I'm about conversation on this morning. I want to get into what it is that you think as well, not just what it is that I have to say. Um, and so we're going to um, start, let's start with reading our, our, our lesson for this morning. Can I get a volunteer to read for this morning? Anyone that has the lesson? Yeah. Good morning, Sister, Sister Cooper. Hi, Sister Cooper. Do you want me to start uh, Luke 10? Yes, Luke 10. Yes. Luke 10, 25 to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. With, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. This do and you will live. But he, but he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And replied, Jesus said, a man was, was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for an extra expense you, you may have. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Amen. 
So this is one of my favorite parables, um, mm. not only because it talks about helping someone else downtrodden and it has so many lessons that are packed in this, but I remember once um, when, when I was youth director, we had the young people to do skits on different parables. And this was one of the ones that they did. And it was just too hilarious how some of um, our young people interpreted um, our parables. Um, but this was one of my favorite. And when we look at this parable, it, um, it has uh, a couple of sections. Let me go over here for one second. Is 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 more difficult when I'm trying to be the tech and the instructor. So we have the test, Luke ten twenty five to twenty nine, the parable that Jesus gives, verses three um, to thirty. I'm mean, sorry, verses thirty to thirty five, and the moral, verses thirty six to um, thirty seven. And when we come to this text, we come and we see that the expert in the law, let me go back to that, the scribe, it says that he is an expert in the law. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I didn't highlight this part, but I should have. that he comes to test Jesus. And if we remember, if we look back into some of the, 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 the scriptures that we study in the New Testament, we see people trying to test Jesus all the time. The, the Pharisees, mm -hmm. the Pharisees, the Pharisees, the, the, Pharisees uh, the, 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 the leaders uh, um, in the Jewish community, they're always trying to trip Jesus up. Remember the time that um, they bring the woman that's caught in adultery and Jesus is, you know, writing something in the ground and he's looking down and they bring this woman to him and says, what must we do with them? You know, do with her. She's been caught in adultery and Jesus tells them, ye without sin, let them cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. And then they take, because they are not without sin. So they drop their stones and they walk away. And then when Jesus looks up and he sees the woman there alone, he says, we are your accusers. They came trying to trip Jesus up. And here it is, we have another situation where they're trying to test Jesus to see what it is that he's going to say, what it is that he's going to do. This expert, he's an expert in the law. He goes and he goes to test Jesus and he asks him this question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay. And Jesus, he gives him, he answers to him. No, he asks, actually, he asks him, um, well, how do you read the law? And the man responds, you know, um, the expert in law, he responds to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and you love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, okay, you said it correctly. Do this and you will live. You know the answer, okay? But because then, then this, the, that but there, remember when we always talk about that but, there's something right. else that's coming and he wants to justify himself. So he asks Jesus another question. Okay, well, who is my neighbor? And this is where the parable comes into play. And um, the parable we've read, Sister um, Evangelist Cooper has read the parable for us. And, um, and so in this parable, in this parable, we have um, certain characters. We have a priest, we have a Levi, and we have a Samaritan. Okay, mm -hmm. these are our key characters in this parable. The priests happen to be going down the same road. Um, and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. Now, first of all, they're in Samaria. 
okay? Samaria, this road, this road on, in Jericho is a dangerous road. It's known yeah. for people, you know, being hurt and being robbed and being killed. This is a dangerous path that they go through. And so Jesus picks this um, particular scenario to say that this man is traveling down this road, okay? And robbers come, they attack them, they leave them half dead. Now, these are key components in the story. They strip them of his clothes, they beat them, they leave them half dead. But now here comes along a priest. He sees this. He looks, he sees this man is half dead. And yet the priest, the preacher, takes <laughs> and walks on the other side. On the other side. Okay. And then here comes along a Levi. When he came okay. to the same place and saw, and he passes on the other side. Now, we have to ask us, this is the, the, the priest and the Levi. These are the people, these are the men of God. Yet oh, they yeah. take and they pass and leave this man as half dead, this man who is in distress, this man who needs help, and they see him. It's not that they don't see him. They see him, and they take, and they pass on the other side. So we have to ask hmm. ourselves, why is it that they pass on the other side? And um, I'm going to, there was a, a thing, a purity law in the Jewish community, laws of purity. Priests were not to touch the corpse because it was impure. Pharisees even believed that if the shadow of a corpse fell on a person, the person became impure. Priests mm -hmm. and Levites were expected to observe high standards of ritual purity for their sacred ministry. When the priest saw the traveler, he did not know whether the man was dead or alive. Therefore, because of the law's governing purity, he did not want to risk defilement by touching him. Such laws were not as strict for Levites, but the Levites also wanted to avoid defilement since any approach to the wounded man would have seriously compromised his position. So because of the purity laws, because that they did not want to become defiled, because they did not want to become impure, they would not associate themselves with corpse, dead people. And they, this priest and this Levi assumed that this man was dead. They didn't know yeah. if he was dead or not. Unclean. Unclean. But because, right, they did not want to take the chance. Now, here's the thing, Jesus, associated with sinners all the time. If you remember, they accused Jesus of, um, of violating the Sabbath. They accused Jesus of why do you associate yourself with sinners? You know, uh, and um, Jesus tells them, you know, and they said about the Sabbath, Jesus says, I trump the Sabbath. You know, and if here is the thing. Are we so wrapped up in ministry that we don't take care of those that are in need? Jesus. Are we oh, so caught oh, oh. up in mm. doing church work Ooh. that we don't do the work of the church? Of the church. Okay. Oh. Now, the, the definition of ministry is meeting a need. That is what we do, we meet a need. Yes. That is the definition of ministry, meeting a need. But do we get so caught up in ministry that we don't meet the needs of people? We don't meet the needs of the, down, the downtrodden. We're so concerned about the program. You know, who's on the program? Who's gonna do this? Who's gonna do that? That we don't, concern ourselves with the actual needs that 
of the people, of the community, those that are hungry, those that are, 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 are cl that need clothing, those that are in need, those that need the word. Are we yes. so caught up, wrapped up? Because we think that ministry is supposed to be glamorous. We think that a lot of people think that uh, uh, preachers, you know, it's a prestigious position, you know. Um, and I'm not knocking preachers, so don't nobody go back and say I'm not knocking preachers. Pastor, I'm not knocking preachers. I'm just saying <laughs> that we get so caught up in caught up. titles, in position, Jesus. that do we actually meet the needs of people? I mean, I want to ask that question. Do you feel that in your walk, in your discipleship, in your walk with Christ, do you feel that you meet the needs as God require of you to do? Anybody? <laughs> or are we guilty? Right. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Garland, good morning. Good morning. I, yeah, good morning. I really enjoy the Sun School lesson. And mm -hmm. the American woman meet the needs of the people. Sometimes, and I agree on like you explaining, but these ministries, sometimes in these ministries, including myself, thought with myself, to put ministry instead of priorities of caring for people, showing more love for people, um, and with people, you know, and I'm um, so busy, you can't call and check on the elder one, how you doing, you're sick and stuff like that, can I do anything for you? Those are meeting the needs of Jesus because Jesus loves everybody regardless of who they was or what they do. He loves each and every one of us. Amen. And I'm glad you said that, including yourself, including me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do myself, we get caught up myself, sometimes? Right. Yeah. And do we get caught up sometimes, you know, and just doing all of, and, and like I said, I call it the church work. Because it's not mm -hmm. necessarily the work of the church. It is not what you've been called to do. You know, right. um, so those are the things that we have to work, you know, you know, concentrate on. And so we have this priest and this Levi that was so caught up in into the in, um to the purity laws that they neglected the needs of someone that was on this road, someone mm -hmm. that was in distress someone that they could have helped. But here comes along a Samaritan. And what yeah. makes this story even the more great is that when we look at the Samaritan, the, the Jews looked at the Samaritans, you know, as beneath them. They yeah. had a hostility towards one another. You mm -hmm. know, the Samaritans they they called them half breeds, half Jews, that they defiled themselves, that they intermarried with the Assyrians, and um, they um, that they did not follow, did it, they did not come to they Jerusalem did. to the temple in Jerusalem to worship, and so the Samaritans were looked as beneath, and the Jews had nothing to do with Samaritans. And the Samaritans, right. likewise, they had nothing to do with Jews. They hated each mm -hmm. other. Oh. Okay. And so here is the Samaritan. And the Samaritans were governed by the same principles as the Jews when it came to the purity laws. But this Samaritan, he's traveling on the road and he comes by after the priest has walked on the other side, after the Levite has walked on the other side, but here comes the, the one that they think is not worthy of them, the one that is beneath them, the one mm -hmm. that is a half-breed, the one that they have yeah. prejudice against. This yeah. Samaritan, he comes mm -hmm. and he sees this man on the road and he stops. Not only yeah. does he stop, but he stops and he helps them. Let, let's go back to the text. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so, but mm -hmm. a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He went to him. He bandaged his wounds. He poured on oil. 
and wine. And then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The half-breed, the one that they can't stand, the one that was beneath them, beneath the Jews. This man took care. He took pity on the man that was on the road. Mm -hmm. And the next day, he took out two denarius and gave it to the innkeeper and said, look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for the extra expense that you have. Okay? Amen. And so the Samaritan took care. And here, when we talk about the Samaritans not having anything to do with the Jews and Jews not having anything to do with Samaritans, yeah. um, there's another uh, a scripture that tells us that backs that up. In John, the fourth chapter, where Mm -hmm. it says it's about Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Remember this woman Mm -hmm. that was sitting at the well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard he was making and baptizing more disciples than John, though Jesus himself was not baptized, but his disciples were, he left Judea and went to Galilee and went again to Galilee. He had to travel through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Shikar, near the property of Jacob, had given his son Joseph, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, worn out of his journey, sat down at the well. And about noon, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Give Mm -hmm. me drink, Jesus um, said to her, because his disciples had gone into the town to buy food. How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? She asked him, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Mm. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God, and who is asking to you, give Hmm. me a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Sir, said the woman, you don't even have a bucket and and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us the well and drank from it himself as did his sons and livestock. Jesus said, everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again, but whomever drinks from the water that I will give him will never thirst again. In Mm -hmm. fact, the water I give him will become a well of water springing up in him for eternal life. Sir, the woman said to him, Give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and come here to draw water. And see, this is the story where Jesus is sitting again by the by the well, Jacob's well, mm-hmm. yeah. talking to a Samaritan woman, someone that he should not have association with. Jesus mm-hmm. wasn't concerned that she was a Samaritan woman. Not only was he sitting there talking to her, he asked her to draw him some water to drink. But he and the priest and the Levi see this man half dead on the road and they pass by on the other side. Okay, so let's go back to the lesson. And so this story Jesus tells to to the to the expert in the law. Remember, he's an expert in the law. And um after which he says, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Mm -hmm. Listen Mm -hmm. to his reply. The Mm -hmm. one who had mercy on Mm him. Amen. Remember, God tells us he desires, he doesn't desire our sacrifices. Our sacrifices are, you know, that's just, that's just ritual. The one who had mercy on him. 
okay? And not only does he say the one, he couldn't even say the Samaritan. Because remember, they hated each other. He couldn't even fix his mouth to say the Samaritan was the one mm. of the three. He said the one who had mercy on him. And um, so when we look um, up into with the Samaritan and and um, again, someone that that they thought that was trivial. Think about, I remember one time I was coming to Sunday school and um, it was early and I, I, I'm coming across Fifth Avenue and I see this man and he's passed out in front of the church, right on mm. the corner, 132nd and Fifth Avenue. And he's just passed out there. And I'm looking and I'm saying, are you okay? And another gentleman comes along and he sees me talking to the man and he comes in. Now, I tell you the truth. I did ask. I didn't get too close. I'm mm -hmm. being honest. I didn't get too close, but I did ask, are you OK? And he wasn't responding. And another man comes by and he gets a little closer and he is asking, you know, um, is this man OK? And he's trying to find out, bro, OK. I call an ambulance while the other man is talking to him. And in the meantime, I go inside the church because I knew Deacon Wright was in there. And I go in there, I get Deacon Wright, Deacon Wright comes out. And so Deacon Wright and this other gentleman is trying to assess, is this man okay? And in the meantime, the ambulance is on the way. One of the members of our church, and I'm telling you, I, I was just really, really embarrassed. They came up, they mm. were coming to Sunday school. Mm. And they said, what is he doing lying out here in front of our church like this for? Why couldn't he Whoa. find some place else to fall out at? Mm. What's wrong with him? Get him from out in front of our church. Mm. Oh, Think about this. In front of the church, Sunday morning, on your mm -hmm. way to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And this is your reaction to a man in distress. Now, whatever his issue was, whether it was a physical ailment, whether it was because he was um, in need, whether because he was in need, whether it was because it had to do with alcohol or whether it was because he had to do with drugs, maybe it was a mental illness, I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. what his situation was. Just like the yeah. priest and the Levite did right. not know what his situation was. And this, no. this, this, this member, and, and I love the way when pastor always talk about, you know, we distinguish between members and disciples. And this no. member comes up. What is he doing here? Why is he laying out in front of our church? What kind of thing is that to say? Mm. My question is, how do we respond to people in distress? Now, I'll tell you, sometimes I do get guilty when you see certain things going on because, you know, there's, there's a fear that we have sometimes of approaching someone that might need help, someone that may be in need, you know, or when they come up and approach us. I remember I was standing on the bus stop a few weeks ago and this man, I think I told you all this, this man, he got too upset with me because he mm. was trying to sell me some stuff that he probably stole from someone else because it mm. was some um, crazy glue and um, something else that he was trying. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to buy this, you know, mm -hmm. and he called me every name in the book. OK, mm -hmm. I mean, this man completely cussed me out, you know, but I would not let him bring me out of who I was, mm -hmm. you know, to respond to him cussing me out the way that he was, you know. And here's the thing. Not too long after that, maybe even a week after that, I knew it wasn't too long. 
I was the first incident happened at the 33 bus stop on 135th and, and Madison. I was walking up Madison Avenue one day coming from 125th Street. I saw this same man. He was in a wheelchair, just like before. And these guys were taunting him. They took all everything in his possession, threw it in the street, everything he had in that bag, threw it in the street. Mm. Okay. And they mm. were just taunting him. And he was just all in distress and he was all, you know, and everything. And I'm coming up Madison Avenue. I didn't say a word. I just started picking up his things mm -hmm. where I could see him and give it back mm -hmm. to him. This is the same man that cussed me out and okay. called me every name in the book. All right, man. You know, but how do we respond? How do we show people? Remember, the church is not the building. That building on 132nd Street and 5th Avenue is just where we go to worship. It is the temple in which we go to worship. Amen. We are the church. Hallelujah. How does the church, how do you, the church, respond mm -hmm. to the needs of people? Are you like the priest and the Levite? Or are you like Jesus? Remember, Jesus associated with all kinds of people, prostitutes, Amen. you know, yeah. um, um, publicans, you know, tax collectors. Tax collectors were considered, you know, taboo in that time. Mm -hmm. And if you know, we don't want to mess with the IRS right now. You know, <laughs> um, um, and people that we don't, people with mental illness, People that we have prejudice that people that we have prejudices against, you know, that we don't want to have any association with them. Are we like the priest and the Levite? Or are we like the Samaritan? And if we look, you know, who is the Samaritan? You know, and they called him the good Samaritan. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we call this parable, the parable of the good Samaritan. Yeah. Someone that you know looks beyond the rich. Oh, you know, yes. when we come to church, you know, sometimes we have to throw away the written program. Do we, Amen. you know, do are we just guided strictly by this program, or do we leave room for the Holy Spirit to work? Hey, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um. And so we had the test, you know, the expert goes and he he's testing, you know, Jesus. He's trying to trick Jesus up. We've had the, the, the parable and, and the moral of the story, the one who had mercy on him. That is the good neighbor. You know, when we think about our neighbors, our neighbors go beyond that person that lives next door to us or that lives in our building. You know, Amen. or if you live in a community, the house down the street from you, you know, who mm -hmm. is your neighbor? You know, do we go beyond those doors? I remember the first time, you know, in Sunday school when that question was asked to me, who is your neighbor? And if, and of course, the first thing you says is the person that lives, you know, they live on my floor, they live in my building, you know, <laughs> you know. If you know when we were down in North Carolina, the one live up the road for us, us we used to walk up yes, the road right. to Miss May House or walk up the mm -hmm. road, you know, to to um to the Hale House, you know. Yeah. Those are our neighbors. That's what we think. But Jesus says, no. Mm -hmm. Your neighbor is anyone. Anyone of oh, any anyone. Anyone that is in need. Need. You know, so I have a question. Um, what message should we learn from the priest and the Levi passing the injured man on the road? And were their concerns legitimate? What lessons do we learn from this? We must have compassion. Okay, we must have compassion. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else? Do not write the judgment on the questions. 
okay, do not rush to judgment. Okay. Anybody else? Don't let your religion uh, uh, trump your compassion uh, hey. for others. Free K. <laughs> hey. My sister. Hey. I love that, you know, and I love that song too with, with Smokey Noful, when he when he tells a story about how they say that Jesus violated the Sabbath and he, and, and he comes back and says, I trump the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Sister Foreman, even if you yourself cannot help someone, you can also send help. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what would cause us to not to want to help and, and send help instead? Again, because of our humanistic side, we fear the unknown. So again, we presume that we can't help or if we help, the outcome may not be good for us. So fear sometimes block you from doing what you know is probably right, the right thing to do. Okay. So um, I heard someone, go ahead, some, go ahead, I'm sorry. But our, someone purpose is, is, our purpose is to love. If you have love in your heart, you have to show love. You have compassion. You sh and if you love, if you said you love, if you love, you love, love God. You, you, you have to love your neighbor. Amen. And that, Amen. and that's anyone. That's anyone of any any race, creed, or whatever social background. You, you show, you show love. Amen. Okay. Okay, love, and that's what we've been talking about these last couple of months. Love. Yeah. And this one being love. inclusive love, mm -hmm. you know, I remember when, um, and still some people still do it, when the AIDS mm -hmm. epidemic mm -hmm. was running rapid, you know, um, people were afraid to touch, you know, something that someone else that had AIDS, you know, until they found mm -hmm. out yeah. that mm -hmm. it can't be spread that way. So we have a prejudice mm -hmm. and um, against those persons that we considered that were defiled, you know, that were impure. You know, even in this 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 coronavirus season, you get too close to somebody that start coughing and hacking and coughing, you are gonna back up. Why? Because we have a fear of the unknown of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that that person has coronavirus. We don't know. Maybe they're choking. Yeah, or or sinus. Or yeah. Right. Or sinuses or allergies. I have terrible mm -hmm. allergies. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I have to say, "Don't worry, I got allergies. I'm 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 cool. I got allergies." Mm -hmm. You know. That's right. But we have a fear of the unknown. But we have to get beyond that fear when it comes to yeah. helping people, when it comes mm -hmm. to loving people. You know, um, I, I read something, I wrote it down too, where um, it said that Jesus is the ultimate good Samaritan. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus is the ultimate good Samaritan. Good Samaritan. Look, that he did. Look at all that he was accused of. Look at all of those that he associated with. You know, and why is he the ultimate good Samaritan? Because he came down from his heavenly okay. throne mm -hmm. and he sacrificed his life. He gave his life and went to the cross yes. for you and for me. Now, how much good can you get? You know, we're doing something for someone. That's, that's, that's love. <laughs> the ultimate good Samaritan, the ultimate, you know, um, demonstration of love. Jesus, the ultimate good Samaritan. Yeah. I mean, and the thing that um, when um, 
I, I also thought about is when, when people ask us to pray for them, we get to the point sometimes we just, okay, sure, I'll pray for you. You know, you're on your way. You're on your way to church and people seeing you, you know, and somebody may say, okay, pray for me when you get to church. Why not stop right then and there and pray for them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Why do you right need here. to get to the building to pray for them? To pray. You're right. You can stop right. right then right. and right now. You don't have to pray no long prayers. Pray. No. no. You don't have to know it's the like, situation. You don't have to get in everybody's business. Business. Amen. When somebody Amen. asks you to pray for them, why not do it right then and there? Mm -hmm. Amen. And forget and then, about what they look like. Jesus. I'm sorry. Forget yeah. about what they look like and what they smell like. Mm-hmm. And forget about the smell and the look. Pray. Have compassion, compassion, compassion. That's mm -hmm. the word, compassion. Yeah. I didn't hear any of that. And that's what we have. We have to have the one who has mercy, the one who oh, has Jesus. compassion, the one who yeah. has love. Do we have yeah. those things? Do we? You know. Do we have and if we don't, do we ask God to give us those things, to, to strengthen them in us? Do we ask God yes. to build us up in those areas where we're weak? Yes. Are we honest enough with ourselves to know when we're not doing right by God's people? When you're sitting there and you're eating a, a, a four course, a five course, a seven course meal, and you Jesus. know that there's someone that's hungry. Oh, yeah. God. Jesus. You know that there's someone that's hungry. Yes. Just here. You know, one of the things mm -hmm. that um I started doing mm -hmm. um was yes. when we have something at the church, or when we had something at the church, and we would have yes. food, I would go in the kitchen and I would ask, can I have a plate for my neighbor? Because she had cancer, she's not able to get up and stand up and cook and and do a lot of things for herself. Mm -hmm. You know, then I would see another neighbor that I knew that was in need and say, mm -hmm. well, if you have enough, can I have two? Mm -hmm. Or when we have the Thanksgiving dinner where we're feeding the community, you know, we wait for the community to come to the church and and sit down to have Thanksgiving dinner at the church. But I ask, can you fix me five, six plates? And I go and mm -hmm. deliver them to people I know that mm -hmm. need that food, that don't have any family that they're sitting down with for Thanksgiving. You know, that, you know, and they appreciate it. I have a neighbor that this man would never speak. This man would never say a word. Until one year, um, they had a bunch of leftover stuff after the Thanksgiving um, dinner. And I went and I knocked on his door and I had one of them Patty LaBelle pies. And mm -hmm. I asked him, would you like a pie? And whenever we have something and I have something to give, you know, and he's one of the ones that I would give. Now this man, he speaks all the time now. Okay. You know, but we don't know I... people's situations. Do we have compassion on people? Do we demonstrate our love, you know, towards mm -hmm. others? No, you know, no. do we have that love within us to give? Because some of us don't even yeah. know how to love. That's true. Oh, my God. Jesus. Some of us, we don't, we don't know how to love. That's true. That's true. You know, we take what what people have thrown on us have dumped on us and how others has treated us that we don't know how to respond back in love and we have to learn to love love ourselves to love god to love god's people if we yeah, say yeah. that we are servants or disciples of god then we have to demonstrate that and and love is is done in demonstration. Love is an act. Action word. Yeah. Action word. Action. You know. So um I didn't get all to say everything that I wanted to say, but um 
if you don't remember anything else, we got to remember that we have to show compassion on people. We have to have mercy on people. You know, and I, I tell you one other thing, you know, um, and this has just been recent. And I have a habit of doing this. You know, I, I saw a lady and she was just standing. I was on a bus stop in the Bronx um, waiting for the number one, the, the BX1. And she was crying. And I missed my bus because of this. And, um, and I stopped to ask her, was she okay? Was she all right? Mm -hmm. And I went and stopped until she responded to me. And she finally, you know, responded. And then every week I was making this journey in the Bronx. And I learned that she worked at that building. She was standing outside that building. And now mm -hmm. every time she sees me, she waves to me and says, hello, good afternoon. You know, how you doing? Because nice. you stop and you ask. You show compassion for people. For people. Right. You know, so I'm going to open it up, you know, for anybody that has anything that they would like to say um, about the lesson, whether it's about love or, or whether it's about the story um, of the Good Samaritan um, or the lesson in general. Anyone that would like to share? I'm just like, I'm really? Yes. Thank you, darling. I was enjoying some two lessons this morning talking about Lucy and myself. I think my love and my growth in, in the word of God, if I be more on the American side with my faith and my love, I think I can grow more spiritual wise and stuff like that. Because um God looking up beyond our thoughts and he see our needs. And as being a Samaritan mm -hmm. or just showing love, that would be good for me, you know, doing for people and not looking down on people. Or, you know, um, I, I, by being a Samaritan woman, pretty much I grew up in the South, everybody was duplicate regardless of regards to who they was, black, gray, or brown. Everybody used to love each other on the road going to Sunday school. It didn't make no difference. Amen. Okay. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. This, hello. This yes, is Mother. I'm here. This is Mother Austin. Good morning. Praise the Lord to everybody. Mother Austin. First, I wanted to say, I was honored that, that I was under the impression that I was supposed to teach this morning, but that's okay. I'm enjoying listening to you. But I want to talk about being a, a neighbor, a good Samaritan. And I want to tell you uh, one of my experience, um, a lot of my experience. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. A lot of Sundays I would be coming to church walking. And I lived over there in the project, Wagner Project. And I would meet a lot of people that, that, that was in despair. A lot of them looked like they had, they had nothing to eat in a week. But they would come to me. And they knew I was going to church from the way I was dressed. So they would ask me, when you get to church, pray for me. And I would always tell them, I may not get to church. I don't know what may happen to me. That I'm a, we're going to pray right now. Yes. And I, I stretched out my hand to them. And they would say, no, my hand is so dirty. I said, well, the most important thing that you're clean on the inside. So yeah. I pray. Yes. Yeah. And then something else I want to say about being a good Samaritan, a good neighbor. There's a lot of times, you know, that people have came to Greater Center. I don't want to use our church, you know, because, you know, it's not our church, it's greater sister, but, and they've come in the, by the kitchen to get some leftovers. And they would, the people's in there would tell them, and they'd say, no, come back. 11 o'clock, we start the service. And that people looked, they, they were just, they, they, you know, they didn't look well, they didn't smell so well. But I was reading that it says that they, our physical wealth should be taken care of first. How can you come to serve the Lord when your stomach is growling and you're hungry or maybe sick or you're so dirty? You eat, you feed them, you clean them. And then you talk about the goodness of God. And perhaps they can identify with what you're talking about. They look at the people dressed up in the church and you tell them, 
if they come and serve the Lord, but first you clean them up and they feel better. And you tell them then, have a seat. We start the service at 11 o'clock. And sometimes, you know, you got to be careful how you approach people, how you talk to them, because we are not all of that. Mm-hmm. And I remember, and I remember when I was down, and, 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 and it wasn't easy for me. I praise God that I have never had to sleep out in the street, but the Lord always made a way for me. But I want to tell you, tell you all of those that can hear me, what a good Samaritan and a neighbor is. A neighbor, a good Samaritan, don't merely mean one of us who uh, shows our neighbor or we are a member of the church and, and how the Lord mm-hmm. has blessed us with what we have on and all of that. Mm-hmm. Being a neighbor, being a the neighbor, is every person who needs our help. Our neighbor is every soul who is wounded and bruised by the enemy. Like the, the, our neighbor is one, is the property of God. Mm. In the story of the good Samaritan, Jesus gave us a picture of himself, how he was bruised on the cross, and yeah. how they stole his people. Uh, uh, it's good around the cross. So a neighbor is someone that comes to your need when you need. You yeah. don't know. You don't, you don't know. And and we don't judge them by uh, black or white or what what uh, they belong to. Some people yeah, don't yeah. know the Lord because they, they haven't had nobody to teach them. So if you do the right thing at the right time, and then you will get closer. You cannot help everybody or make everybody. You don't know how to go about it. So you just be good to them and treat them with love. And the first thing about our lesson is love. Yes. Yes. Paul Jesus didn't Mm -hmm. help us because he didn't love Mm -hmm. us. He loved us regardless of who we are and what Mm -hmm. we did. He picked us up and turned us around. He sat out on solid ground and he gave us another chance. And I'm not, I haven't been like I am today. I tell you all, I've been out there, I don't know, and didn't know the way. You see, God would send our good people in our lives. Say it again. And we don't know how to go and what to say. But if we hope, stand still and listen to that little whisper that comes from heaven above and tell us to hold on, I'm here with you. You see, Jesus never, never, he promised never to leave us or forsake us. You don't come to nobody because you're all of that. God loves everybody regardless of the year. That's right. And then I just want to put my little two suit in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mother Austin. Thank Linda, you. can I say yes. something? Yes. Okay. If God not- is who we say he is, and he's God of gods, he's Lord of lords, and God mm-hmm. is love, then we are supposed to love. He has given yes. us an ability to love. So it's That's not right. that we can't love that way. We, It may be it's obedience. <laughs> And that's why we pray. And that's why we study the word. God has already placed this in our lives Mm. already. We Mm. got to do it. You know, we talk about it and it's not about us because he gets the glory. Yes, he does. He gets the glory. Yes, he does. His love is for him to get the glory. So we represent him. We we represent him through the world, to the world with love. Amen. You don't have to like everybody. (laughs) <laughs> but you, have- so you you don't have to lo- to like people or like their ways, but you got to love them. Yes. Yes. God, he, he said, love the neighbors like you love yourself. Love and then sometimes, yourself. listen, you got to be careful. You know what we read? He said, love yourself like you love yourself. A lot of people don't love themselves. That's right. Mm. So That's you true. can't love them like you love yourself. The way they treat themselves. And in these last days in time, you have to be careful how you walk, how you talk. Yes, ma'am. Because, because people will look at you 
and read you. We may be the only Bible that a non-believer will ever read. They read non-believers. They read us. So you have to be careful how you walk, how you talk, how you treat people. Because I want to tell y'all, it's not get late in the evening. It's already oh, late right. in the evening. Yeah. Yeah. And the sun is almost yeah. down. Yeah. And we're yeah. living in a time where we don't know where to say yes or no. But we got Jesus on our side, and that's Ooh. enough. Jesus. Amen. Okay, so we I see that pastor's on the line. So we're going to ask if he has anything to say, and then we're going to turn over to um, our superintendent, Sister Hill. Did someone else say something? But I have to say, John three sixteen is for God to love the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He shall believe in that first have everlasting life. Love, love. Yes, the ultimate Amen. gift of love. Okay, Pastor. Yes. Good morning to each and every one, especially to you, our instructor this morning, Sister Foreman. Thank you for doing an excellent job in the lesson and sharing the Word of God with us Amen. to our special superintendent. I, I just want to say, uh, I reflect on this sermon, on the, the scripture. I remember years ago, our pastor Monroe, he preached a sermon on from the text. He said, and his subject was passed up, picked up, uh, dressed up and paid up, amen. And so that's what our job is to do as a good Samaritan. And then something I just came to mind uh, when you, uh, this man was walking. He was walking uh, when he, the Samaritan was walking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we need to get out of our cars, <laughs> buses, and trains. Amen. And you know, we have to meet people on ground level. You know, yeah. we pass up a whole lot of people flying on planes, trains, and automobiles, and you got to meet people uh, on the ground. Uh, first of all, I, I thank God. I'm just dropping some nuggets there. You can pick them up as you please. Uh, also, a lot of time in being a, a, to have love for your neighbor, you have to come out your comfort zone. Yes, yeah, you do. We, yes. we have we have to extend ourselves above and beyond reason. That's what makes the difference when you're a child yeah. of God. Some people just do okay. just enough, you know, just to say yeah. that I did something, you know. Uh, and yeah. so that's another thing. Uh, you do have people. Uh, the man that was beat up, it just said a man, no name. That's mm -hmm. right. A certain mm -hmm. man. Insignificant person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No name. Uh, no name. And this, what happened is when we have opportunity, uh, we are to be able to help somebody. As the song said, we sing it, but do we imply it? As Sister yeah, Robin along said, the way. it's about it, it, it. We have to become doers of the word and not just hearers only. We got the instructions today of those that's on the line. So when we have, therefore, if you have opportunity to do good, do it, <laughs> especially mm -hmm. kind of those that household of faith. And so uh, if I can help somebody, that, that somebody is anybody. Yes, that somebody yes, is everybody. And mm -hmm. so uh, we have to put that into practice. And then uh, also the question that you had the priest, you had the Levite, you know, people of the church, amen, of the temple. But the question is, uh, and then you had the Samaritan. Uh, but the question is, as I, as I was able to preach from that sermon, that text one day, which side of the road are you walking on? So a lot yes. of times, uh, it's a self-examination question. Yes. We all see the opportunity to do good. Do we ignore it uh, or do we uh, take it uh, and put it into practice? Jesus, I like when I was looking at the lesson, Jesus' love is inclusive and not exclusive. Yes. We got to get that word. Inclusive and not exclusive. And then, and then last but not least, I was looking at an illustration about these uh, uh people uh, of the law, that's what they were, law-minded people, the priests and the Pharisees, the priests and the Levite, they were people of the law. And like Sister Foreman said, there were rules and regulations. You couldn't help nobody even in distress. And I mm -hmm. thought about the illustration of the Crown Heights riot. Did anybody mm -hmm. remember that? The Crown mm -hmm. Heights riots of 1991 in Brooklyn, August 9th. And what happened was a, a Jewish, a uh, group of Jews were traveling along President Street in uh, Crown Heights, Brooklyn, and one of the guys ran the light and he had an accident and he hit two young African American, a uh, Guyanese children, seven year old Gavin Cato and his cousin. And when the, when the ambulance showed up, look what they did. They took the Jewish, the hot solar, that was a Jewish uh, uh, company, ambulance company. Now, when they showed up, 
instead of assisting uh, young Gavin Cato, who was pinned under the car, they took the Jewish <laughs> driver who was all right. They took him away, but left the young Gavin Cato. Amen. So if you ask Hasola today, oh, we don't deal with Gentiles. But yet that was an opportunity to save somebody's life and mm -hmm. they didn't right. do it. Mm -hmm. And so last but not least, when I think about this American, I'm, we all should have our own testimony. I thank God as the priest that I have a heart, I have a mind, I have a history of ministry of health. Amen. I wouldn't be the pastor if I didn't first serve for almost 23 years as a deacon. Being caring, being concerned, loving people. Amen. If you don't have a shepherd's heart to care for God's people, uh, uh, you shouldn't be. Able, you shouldn't even be in the position of a priest or Amen. pastor. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for my the way that I came. Uh, I came up through the ladder of service, you know. And so uh, we're grateful for the lesson. Love your neighbors. Who is your neighbor? Anybody that you have an opportunity to help is your neighbor. God bless Amen. you. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Um, we have Reverend Hill, Deirdre Hill, on the line. We're going to give her word um, before um, sis, um, our superintendent, Sister Hill, comes. And then um, Sister Hill will um, take us to the benediction. I know we're a little behind, but this lesson was yeah. just that good. Oh, I, yeah, I'm sorry, VK. I didn't want to really go after your pastor. I just wanted to, to say this was a terrific lesson. Praise God. I'm so glad that I was able to uh, jump in on this lesson. And one of the things I was really uh, convicted with uh, the things that were going on, you always have to be reminded, amen, um, you, you know, not to think yourself higher. But one of the things that uh, that I'm being left with is definitely about prayer because, um, and, and to pray for more love and to pray for more compassion that I might be able to receive that. It just doesn't fall from the sky. Like you said, it's action. And many times we may think, or I may think, oh yeah, I'm this compassionate person, I'm this loving person, but how do I measure that against what Christ is really saying? I can't just be loving to the people who are loving. And sometimes we're compassionate to people who are outside and we're not compassionate to our own family. Our family yes. could be the Samaritan. Our family could be the one that is in need. Uh, there are yeah. people in church who are in need and we're compassionate to people outside of, of the, the, the single mom who's in church who is struggling or someone who's in church struggling or even our own family. And so um, I thank God for this lesson. I thank God that mm -hmm. I'm able to now go back to God and to pray for him yeah. to give me a new measure of compassion, a new measure of love that it might be renewed um, in me. So thank you for that. Amen. Okay, Sister Hill. Sister Hill, press star six again. You are already unmuted. There you go. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. Give it all honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Honor to our pastor, Reverend Frank Hawkins, Minister Hill, Minister Graham, Minister Hayes, Evangelist Cooper, Deacon Frank Hawkins, the chairperson of the Arcanet Ministry, Deacon Jake McIver, chairperson of the Trustee Ministry, Director of Christian Education, Brenda K. Foreman, our teachers, Mother Orphan, Sister Sparks. All praises to our Lord and Savior for this online study, the church school. God is good and worthy to be praised. Thanks to our teacher facilitator, Sister Brenda K. Foreman, allowing God to use her to the ones that are online or on their phone. It is not over until God says it's over. So we will be online until further notice. We had seven weeks of love, all kinds of love. We study, we learn. Now, what are we going to do? Are we going to act upon it? So, if you don't have a book, I keep saying, if you don't have a book, you can pick up one at the Sanctuary Central Baptist Church, 
2152 58th Avenue. And there's a fee for the book, and it's $10. Well, you can follow the teacher facilitator in the book. You can follow along in the lesson. And the time set aside to pick the book is a Friday, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. The church is also, not the church, but the church school is asking for a donation by way of our website, www.centralbc.org. Go down to the give a five link. Or you can mail in your check or money order, but please write on it, search school. We're gonna be online still, and our number online is 872-240-3311. Access code eight five zero zero nine eight seven zero one followed by the pound sign. Now why you need your book, because we're gonna be reading our prayer on page sixty three. So you can follow along in the book, reading our prayer. Thank you, Father, for the great commandment for your glory and your fulfillment. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We want to love you with all that is with us. And we want to love our neighbor. So whomever you place before us in the same way we love ourselves, Jesus yeah. and we pray. Amen. And we want to remember Good Samaritan asks, How can I be neighbor? Amen. Amen. So, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O oh Lord, our strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Don't see you in the morning, 10 o'clock, for, for our virtual morning worship. Don't forget to um, give a donation for our. Um, church school, or you can go to Giblify to do that. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Okay, See bless you. you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Great lesson, Bika. Thank you. Mm -hmm. God bless. Yes. Love is a powerful Great. word.